As with all our subject area toolbars, Arm Easy Teach's math toolbar was designed to create dynamic, innovative lessons while being user-friendly and simple to use on the fly during teachable moments. Again, the tools you'll find on this toolbar were recommended by teachers and specialists as one they'd find most helpful to have at their fingertips. Math is a subject area that lends itself well to the use of technology in the classroom, as our toolbar indicates. I'm going to start off usage of our math toolbar from the top with the function machine. A simple touch on will create my function machine to come right out onto my page for me. And I'm going to pair it up with our fraction generator. On our fraction generator, you'll see that there are common and then the possibility of creating custom made fractions. If you've ever had to create a worksheet of fractions, you know how difficult it can be in some applications to have to create and drag out and manipulate fractions in other programs. The common ones are easy to pull out and I can place it right into my function machine. I also like to pair this up with one of our boxes. Just a simple box over here is going to hide my answer so that I can have 100% participation by my students. Let's say I want my students to put this fraction into simplest form and I am going to use my machine to do that by multiplying by 1. If my students are writing their answers on papers or a little dry erase board, I can now run my function machine wait for all of my students to respond before actually showing them the answer and to check if they've got their work correct. With this function machine I can also drag my answer back over to this side to go through multiple operations in my problem if I had to do other steps in my process. And again, the ease at which I can just create any custom fraction and drag them out along with choosing the correct size that will fit my screen according to what I'm trying to do, worksheet or nice large visual for the classroom. The RM Easy Teach graphs are one of the tools that's nice to be able to grab to use on the fly or to have pre-created in a lesson that you've made on your own in advance. Starting out with blank graphs, we can pull in a simple graph like this and then use it as a bar graph. You'll see that our graphs even go up into sine, cosine, and tangent as far as the ones that are readily available and pre-made. Now with my blank graph, one of the things that I can do is actually use it as a bar graph. I'm going to grab my fill tool and then I can actually fill in, choose colors, and have my students give, my, give their data previously collected and actually create a bar graph for us live in class. We can then easily label. Perhaps they were talking about which food they'd like to have for lunch, whether they be pizza or hamburgers. We can then take this text and then use it to label that diagram by just simply dragging it and switching its position. Also on the graphs you do have where you can create your own custom. So if I'm going to be doing a more advanced usage of a graph, perhaps I'm an economics teacher and we need to look at some type of economic growth. I can change my divisions and my steps to pull out a more advanced class a graph for that class. At this point, I'm now going to allow my students to graph their data. That can be done in a number of ways. That could be something like taking an X and using that as my graphing point and putting that where it belongs. Or I could simply give them a pen and have them plot their points on the graph as we go. And using our polyline, they're going to be able to connect those lines. The number lines are similar to the graphs in that you can create common and custom number lines. So we have common ones starting with 0 through 10. And then we can also scroll down to see that we go all the way up to 1,000. 
negatives are also possible and these are not static you can pull the numbers off of here and then have the students actually organize the numbers in the correct order which is wonderful when you're dealing with negative numbers and and what is greater than and less than I'm going to throw in a clean page to show you how you could also create a custom number line so let's say I wanted to start at 0 and go up to oh let's say 86 but I'm going to change the steps in between. I'm going to do steps of 8 and pull that number line out. And then I'm going to do steps of 6 and pull that number line out. Notice that my students can not only use these number lines as you typically would with adding, subtracting, and doing algebra along a number line, but also now my students can grab a pen and circle the common multiples. This makes it a very valuable tool, as well as being able to use it even for social studies. So let's say that I'm a social studies teacher and we wanted to teach about war, a certain war. We can actually change our number lines. Let's go up to, say, 68. And we'll do steps of 1. I can also do steps of 1.5 if I wanted to or 0.5, I think I'll do 0.5, and then grab out my number line. So you can see where even in a social studies application, these number lines can come in very handy when you can create them common and custom. Like the graphs and the number lines, the grids also have the possibility of using common grids or custom grids. So I'm going to pull out one of my custom grids. We'll go 1 to 100 to demonstrate what we how we can use this in the classroom because these are not static numbers just like on the number lines and on the graphs as well you can pull any of these numbers out so if I was looking for multiples of a certain number I can have the students pull those out or perhaps I want them to go through and actually fill in for me any of the prime numbers then they could do that for me as well Speaking of prime numbers, there is a grid in here that is created with just prime numbers on it for the students. So you're able to actually pull those out. And then if you want to, you can have it actually printed for your students. So if I grab out my prime number grid and then I printed this one page, they can take that grid and put it right into their notebooks. Likewise for the multiplication tables. So if you go up here to the multiplication tables, notice that we have the tables 1 through 10. And of course you can always create your own custom. So if you wanted your, your multiplication table to go up to 12, you could create your own table that way as well. The place value cards are located at the bottom of the math toolbar. They are available in decimals all the way up to millions. They are also color codable using your fill tool and your fill color. You can choose which color you desire and then choose your fill tool to change the color within. This makes learning for visual learners much easier to be able to understand millions are going to be in green, thousands are going to be in orange, and then our decimal places will all be in blue. By dragging the back half onto the front half, they will pop together and then stay connected. And again, you can pull the back half off in order to pull them apart. Notice how it will take the ones place and tuck it in behind the ones place of my thousands number here. There are different size cards that you can pull out. So if I'm going to pull out my mediums, I'm going to get about that size. And then again, the larges are going to come out even larger. So depending on how many cards you wanted on a page, you can choose the size accordingly. So in summary, we've taken a look at the function machine in conjunction with our fraction generator, the number lines and how we can not only use them as number lines, but also as a timeline if I'm studying history or I can use them for uh, least common multiples. We've taken a look at the graphs and the grids as well as place value cards. We also have available common numbers and algebraic symbols and a compass which is excellent for bisecting an angle.
Be sure to take a look at our other videos on science, geography, and language arts as well.